Luffy's Gear 5 Nika form has been hinted at since the first chapter of One Piece. People that are saying that this wasn't planned are just flat out wrong because Oda told us what the fruit is since the very beginning. It has also been foreshadowed in a Zo cover page, chapter 2, and even in Jaya. What's up guys, Wizard of Ors here, and today I'm going to explain to you how Oda always had this idea planned and ready to happen in Wano since the very, very beginning. I'm going to be explaining some forms of foreshadowing that no one else has brought up, and now let's get into it. In the recent chapter of 1044, we found out that Luffy not only became Joy Boy, but that he also has the mythical Zoan, Human Human Fruit. This fruit apparently has the properties of rubber combat, it also puts smiles on people's faces that are far and wide. Also, awakening the fruit strengthens the rubbery body and gives them even more freedom. This explanation of the fruit answers so many questions about who Luffy truly is. I remember the first time I watched One Piece, I remember Luffy being kind of an annoying and rude kid until he ate the fruit. The very first time we see Luffy, we see him reckless, energetic, and angry. He seemed like a normal little boy who wants to be a tough pirate one day. His emotions weren't weird, and his actions weren't too out of place for a little kid. He wasn't the jolly little Luffy that we know today. In fact, even when he smiles, it's a calm and normal smile compared to his more recent smiles that have that crazy look in his eye. Now you may say, well what does this have to do with anything? Well don't you think that it's strange since it's Luffy that we're talking about? If Luffy was a real person, he'd be one of the strangest and most unique people that you'd meet. He's so immature to the point where he's a grown man that cares more about having fun than wondering if the One Piece is actually real. So how was Kid Luffy in Romance Dawn a normal kid, but then grew up to be one of the most immature, fun, and hilarious personalities? It seems to be because of the fruit that makes you a person of smiles, or should I say Nikas. Still, in chapter 1, we see Luffy's personality instantly change the day after he ate the fruit. Before the fruit, he's yelling in Shanks' face, stabbing his eye out to show his manhood, but then the next day, laughing and smiling just when he's buying fish. I mean, I get it if you're happy to buy some food, but there's not really anything too funny about it. Notice how the employee tells Luffy that he seems to be in a very good mood that day. After this, Luffy tells him that after eating the gum gum fruit, he's become even happier after eating the gum gum fruit. Even Luffy notices that he's changed and become a happier person. The Gorosei claim that the fruit puts smiles on faces, far and wide smiles. Luffy's smiles before this weren't too big or too wide, but they somewhat looked normal. After the fruit, his smiles look far and wide. Now this may be partly due to him being rubber, since rubber allows him to stretch giving him a bigger smile, but with all of this, it's literally been foreshadowed since the first chapter of One Piece. I've heard people say Oda didn't plan this or that it's out of nowhere, but actually no, Oda did plan it and he made certain lines and phrases very intentional in the very first chapter. One day after eating the fruit, Luffy isn't quite used to it yet, so even then he isn't as goofy and funny as he is later on in his life. In Ace's flashback, we see Luffy being a complete goofball and it seems that the fruit has really caught on to him. He throws gummo gummo no punches, showing that it's been a bit of time since he first got the fruit. The smile or Nika abilities of the fruit were in much more effect by this age. Luffy is so happy and friendly that he never quits on becoming Ace's friend. He even eventually gets a somewhat depressed, lost Ace to put on the biggest smile he's ever made. Although Ace and Sabo already seemed very close, it seems that once Luffy joined their crew, they became more like actual brothers, in the way that they always smile and laugh together. Before he met Luffy, Ace seemed to be a very depressed kid that didn't even know if he deserved to live. Orewa. But after meeting Luffy, he seemed a lot happier and it seemed like he finally started to see the fun and happiness in life itself. In a way, Luffy truly was his happiness and as he was dying, he tells Luffy there's one thing he's left undone, which is to see Luffy's dream through to the end. That's his only regret in life, not even that he himself won't find the One Piece, or that he won't make Whitebeard the Pirate King, but no, his one regret is that he's dying before he can see Luffy's dream through to the end. He proceeds to tell Luffy that he was a demon spawn, 
the son of the devil. And lastly, thank you for loving me. This shows that Luffy's love and happiness was even able to change a child who believed he was a demon spawn and who had no hope for the world. In a way, Luffy truly was his happiness. One with the mythical Zoan, human human fruit has the ability to put smiles on faces, even on a kid like Ace. Ace even died smiling believing that Luffy will acquire his dream one day and also being thankful for being loved by his brother. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing with Ace, I wonder if Shanks went to Fusha Village because he knew Ace was there. Maybe he intended to feed it to Ace instead of Luffy to continue the Roger legacy. Roger did tell Ray Lee that his son would be the next king of the pirates. Next thing you know, Luffy eats the fruit by accident and the Shanks pirates are tripping. Shanks' reaction was priceless and it almost seemed too good to be fake. Shanks is one mysterious dude as of right now, so something like this wouldn't surprise me since Oda always seems to lead us in one direction with Shanks, and then completely taking a U-turn the next time we see him. It seemed like he already knew Luffy and finally met Ace later on when Ace was an adult, so maybe he was there to give it to Luffy. But at the same time, it just seems like a very sus situation. I wonder if Shanks also knows the importance of the straw hat or did he just give it a luffy because he reminded him of himself and reminded him of gold d shang seems to know a decent amount of the world since he's able to meet up with guys like whitebeard and the gorosei he also doesn't seem to be after the one piece so maybe he already knows what some of it is and then lost the passion to find it anyways with this being said i do find shanks's appearance in the east blue to be the key to everything whether you think it's fate destiny, luck, or none of the above. One way or another, Shanks showed up to Fusha Island, Luffy ate the greatest fruit to ever exist, and then Luffy became the most happy, fun, and enjoyable kid in the seas. The next foreshadow of Luffy becoming Nika was in Chapter 2. At the very end of Chapter 2, Oda put this little page in explaining what the Jolly Roger is. Notice how there's a shadowed out pirate that looks a lot like the picture of Nika. Now I know it doesn't look exactly the same, but try to remember that this is chapter 2 and it was 25 years before he drew the current picture of Nika. Of course it's not going to look exactly the same, but he probably didn't know exactly how he would draw it 25 years from then. He most likely just had the idea of the outlet and the shape. On top of this, in the same page, it also says that the Jolly Roger is a symbol of death. Kind of like how Luffy had to die to become Nika. I don't find it a coincidence that both death and an early sketch of Nika are in the same page. Remember, this is chapter 2 which shows Oda was planning this stuff from the very beginning. Another time Oda shows us that he's planned this from the start is in chapter 218. In this chapter, Robin just joined the crew and she uses her fruit power to put hands on Luffy that makes him look like he has antlers. Notice how he says, I'm Chopper foreshadowing that Luffy is just like Chopper since they both have a human-human zone fruit. I'm pretty sure most have already seen this foreshadowing, but it's the next part in the chapter that makes you think to yourself, there's just no way. When you turn the page, the next panel is a ship falling from the sky. Notice how the narrator's words quote, anything man can imagine is a possibility in reality, a quote from the physicist Willie Karen. This foreshadows the human-human fruit model Nika since one of the abilities of the fruit seems to be able to do anything that Luffy can imagine. Apparently the fruit's only limitation is the user's imagination and Luffy seems to be a pretty creative fellow, so I don't see this holding him back. In my opinion, this fruit is just such a dope idea since from here on out we'll probably see different moves every time Luffy fights and becomes Gear 5. I still do think he'll become some form of a giant eventually and maybe he'll get his inspirations while in Elbaf. Maybe he'll imitate something that the Elbafs do since that's how he usually creates his moves and forms. I guess Gear 3 is already based off of a giant's arm, but I hope we see something else with his whole body growing. If Oda quoted a physicist's line speaking of making imagination possible, we should assume that Oda himself has a million ideas ready for Luffy and we should be expecting some of the coolest and funniest moves ever created in anime and manga.
I mean, this dude's been thinking about One Piece and specifically Luffy for probably well over 30 years now, so he's definitely got some more great ideas left in his bag. Well, the last foreshadow I'll be discussing in this video is in chapter 821's cover page. Notice how the art style is inspired off of traditional Japanese art, foreshadowing Wano. It also has Luffy putting up 5 fingers instead of 4, which is what he always does when he goes into gear 4, so I would assume that this is foreshadowing gear 5. He also has flames around him which is also hinting at gear 5 and the sun god. In this chapter we see Momo talk to Zunisha for the very first time. Kind of like how we find out about Joy Boy from Zunisha telling Momo through the voice of all things. So basically this chapter is referencing Luffy going into gear 5 for the first time while Zunisha is talking to Momo with the voice of all things. Also while it's taking place in Wano and while Luffy becomes the sun god and has a fiery glow. Another thing that Preach told me the other day is that Luffy eating meat is referenced from Popeye eating spinach. Now this ain't really, you know, a foreshadow, but in a way it's a big reference that we finally learned with the Toon Force and all that. Anyways, so for those who didn't think Luffy's Gear 5 Nika form was foreshadowed, did I change your mind? If not, let me know down in the comments why or why not. I personally love this idea and Luffy's new ability. This might even be my favorite chapter in all of One Piece or at least top 5. You guys agree with me and most people in the community, or do you guys think it's a little overhyped. Let me know everything you think and feel about the new chapter and why. Thanks a lot for watching, can't wait for the next chapter to come out this Friday, and please have a great day.